Coming up on ATV News, for Women's History Month, we caught up with AU Student Body President China Brody to learn more about her day-to-day -day life on the job. Also, the Kennedy Political Union hosts influencer Nubella Noor and invites students to learn more about her rise to fame. All this and more coming up on ATV News. Welcome to ATV News. I'm Ginger Callwood. And I'm Jane Caroline Fusco. Here are today's top stories. Our broadcast today celebrates Women's History Month by featuring stories on women at AU and beyond. One influential woman at AU is student body president, China Brody. I spoke with her to learn more about what holding her position entails. China Brody, who served as student government president since 2021, is one of the most visible people on AU's campus. And that's not an accident. Brody prides herself on being accessible to AU students and listening to their concerns. If you want to have a conversation, come to me, we can talk about it. I'm always in front of MGC. And just really having like that open, honest and transparent communication because if I don't know there's a problem, we can't address it. Brody is the first black woman to serve as president. Like many groundbreaking women, she says that created some challenges. Especially being black and a woman offers a different level of intersectionality within kind of like that position um, because people are not only looking at you like, okay, is she a woman? Can she do the job? But now I'm black, so we're adding that into it. But I take it with stride. The first president ever elected to two terms, Brody's track record speaks for itself. She led the creation of both an AU yearbook and the State of the Union Gala. But her primary focus has been advocating for the needs of both students and employees. One of her proudest accomplishments has been helping to address food insecurity, which affects one of four AU students. During her presidency, AUSG began the Eagles Helping Eagles program, which allows students to donate meal swipes. She also helped raise more than $2,000 to help unemployed AU dining staff members during the pandemic. Brody hopes to be remembered for these accomplishments, but more importantly, she wants to serve as a role model for future students. Hopefully someone can look at me and be like, because China ran, I could do it too. Like that's ultimately like what I want to do, especially for, you know, black people, people of color on this campus. Brody is graduating this spring and has her sights set on law school but she promises to stay involved in the AU community. I know AU students, they're like, are you gonna come back, are you gonna leave us? I'll be back, uh, just to say hi, um, I'm always here. For ATV News, I'm Jane Caroline Fusco. In the theme of highlighting powerful women, this next story features Nabella Noor. The Kennedy Political Union hosted Noor so she could talk with students about how she uses social media to help empower others. Lindsay Morin has the story. Social media influencer Nabella Noor spoke at a panel for AU students and alumni. The Kennedy Political Union hosted Noor and moderator Professor Priya Doshi to run the Q&A. Nabella Noor is a first-generation Bangladeshi-American mother, creator, and activist. She says she uses social media to empower her followers to feel comfortable with who they are, where they came from, and how they want to take on the world. But I think what makes her extremely motivational is how she uses her experiences and just makes it broad so that way everybody can just accept it, use it as their own, and then actually love themselves. Students were able to listen to Noor address her platform as an influencer and describe her journey to get to where she is today. I like when she talked about how she doesn't always have to be suffering to be relatable and how people on TikTok especially like angry and sad content get like the most views and like she's like built a platform around being like grateful and positive. After the panel, students had the opportunity to take photos and chat with Nabella for a few minutes. Overall, students said this event was a success and they hope to have more speakers like Noor come to AU in the future. The more and more that I watched her, the more and more that I started to actually reflect and love on myself, which is why I'm here. For ATV News, I'm Lindsay Morin. Sexual violence prevention organizations met with AU administrators March 1st to discuss issues surrounding sexual violence on campus. The organizations included AU's It's On Us and Rape on Campus and No You're Nine. Students brought up personal stories surrounding alleged inefficiency with the Title IX office. They cited difficulties with accessing proper accommodations and retaliation for speaking out. No one from the Title IX office attended the meeting. On its on us's website, um, 
AU is designated as a crisis. Members of the organization It's On Us say they will not have any more discussions with university administration until someone from the Title IX office is present. Speaking of accountability, AU hosted Angela Davis yesterday to talk about students with, about her longtime work as an activist and abolitionist. She urges students to work together to fight oppressive institutions and to not assume they're incapable of change. Although she says she admits her advocacy is idealistic, she says she happily accepts that label. Davis also highlighted the importance of celebrating black women and their liberation efforts throughout Women's History Month. She says black women are the standard for freedom and that when they rise up, they bring everyone else along. To wrap up Women's History Month, AU highlights another historical woman. The Anne Frank Center exhibit opens March 27th in the lower level of the Bender Library. The student-led tour will engage fellow Eagles in discussions about anti-Semitism through Anne Frank's history. In collaboration with the University of South Carolina, AU students will have access to the traveling resource until April 30th. Coming up after the break, we hear the story of an AU student who immigrated from the Middle East. She's adjusting to life here after fleeing the Taliban. Also, we highlight female entrepreneurs found here at American University. All this and more when we return. If you need to do something to feel okay to drive, you're not okay to drive. Don't drive buzzed. Eva Marie smoked 12,000 packs of cigarettes over 15 years. She quit, and now there's a new lung cancer screening that could save her life. You stopped smoking, now start screening. No matter how much you smoked, Early detection could save you. Talk to your doctor or learn more at savedbythescan.org. AU students come from all over the world. Jacob Clark spoke with one student about her inspirational story as an immigrant from the Middle East. Plot stigma around their gender and succeeded in their goals. One such student is Sultana Amani. Sultana is a sophomore, and last year she fled Afghanistan with her mother when the Taliban retook power. Today, she's a thriving AU student in the School of Public Affairs. When I started studying at AU, it was so difficult, and still I'm facing some challenges. It is not like impossible. It is possible, but not that much. Um, like that, I worry a lot and a lot that I cannot study in here. Sultana's story could not have been possible without the Blossom Hill Foundation, which is a nonprofit that helps refugee minors in the Middle East. Director Shiva Saran plays a pivotal role in helping these children and has made it some of her life's work. But the reality is that there was really a vacuum when it came to refugee children and families um, from the Middle East. And so that's really the crux of what um, we do at Blossom Hill. And as you probably know, we have worked with and supported over 90,000 children, children defined by the United Nations as um, uh, boys and girls between the ages of zero and 24. And we currently have 16 different schools and programs for refugee children from the Middle East around the globe. While issues in the Middle East remain tense for women, we know that leaders are trying to make a difference, both abroad and right here at AU. This is Jacob Clark for ATV News. For Women's History Month, I went out to find female entrepreneurs on AU's campus to talk about their various business ventures. In honor of Women's History Month, March is full of opportunities to reflect on the achievements and contributions of women. With alum like Alice Paul and a law school that was the first in the world to be founded by women, American University has a history of supporting gender equality. At AU, Many undergraduates are continuing this legacy by bringing awareness to social issues through their business endeavors. Junior Miriam Yarger, who uses she, they pronouns, has been making art for about 10 years. On Monday afternoons, she sells her artwork on the quad. 
Their art mostly focuses on gender identity and expression. Well, I've been painting for a really long time, and it's something that I'm very passionate about. It's one of the best ways, I think, to express yourself. And I thought I would try to share that with other people and see if I can make a quick buck. <laughs> other students, such as Sophia Nayar, also uses her craft as a way to spark activism. Nayar is a junior and freelance photographer and a member of AU Photo Collective, a student photography club on campus. Nayar also does headshots at the Career Center. Nayar says photography is more than just taking pictures. I'm hoping that viewers looking at the photos will be able to build conversation with each other and hopefully learn something new. For ATV News, I'm Ginger Callwood. Some business changes are also coming to dining at AU. Kicking things off, the campus will be welcoming celebrity chef Jet Tila next Thursday. He will be out on the quad to give a cooking demonstration and offer samples of his famous dishes. Tila specializes in Thai and Chinese food. Not only will he be teaching, but he will be serving some of his recipes in the terrace dining room for dinner that day. But as we say hello to new faces on campus, we will also be saying goodbye. This month, Fanta Ah departed from AU after serving as Vice President of Undergraduate Enrollment, Campus Life and Inclusive Excellence. The Triple Eagle, with three degrees from American, had worked with the university since 1992. Now Ah serves as the Executive Director and CEO of NASFA, which is the Association of International Educators. In an email sent out to students earlier in the semester, President Sylvia Burwell says Oz's impact is nearly immeasurable and will continue to be felt for years to come. The university plans to hire three new staff members to hold Oz's former position. Coming up, some students and other shoppers are walking away without paying. We will hear about a rise in theft in East Campus Market. Also, some AU students are preparing to leave the country. We will hear from students who plan on studying abroad when we return. Hi, I'm Smokey Bear, and I made an assistant to help you prevent wildfires. Dude, I've got this. I've been camping since I was five years old. But I am a camping influencer. You know what, I'll bet you five bucks. Okay. Assistant Smokey, what is the best way to put out a campfire? Mm-hmm. To put out a campfire, drown with water, stir, drown again, then make sure the fire is out cold by feeling with the back of your hand. Wait, really? I'll take the five bucks. Okay, Dad. One, two, three. Ah! You saved me. Dad? Are you okay? I'm fine, dear. Your hero needs you now, and AARP is here to help. Find the care guides you need at aarp.org caregiving. Recently, there has been a growing concern in the AU community about the number of thefts occurring at the East Campus grocery store. ATV's Francine Warsoff has the story. AU food service workers say they're concerned about on-the-rise thefts at AU's East Campus store. They claim that what they call uncaught crimes are going unseen in the annual reports. I mean, I think that it's terrible that people are taking advantage of like a lack of security and like they're seeing that hole in like a used department and then taking advantage of workers that like are probably already like overworked and underpaid. AU's 2022 annual security report says there were zero robberies in 2020 through 2021, but does not include the year 2022. The clerky crime report, though, shows four thefts total for 2022. Despite the absence of data on reported rise in thefts, workers at the pod market on East Campus say that these thefts continue to go unseen. Some AU students say the lack of action on behalf of AUPD makes them worried that these petty crimes will continue. With the amount of incidents that are happening all over campus, I feel like if there was a way to document what is happening through video footage, I personally don't find that an infringement of privacy. Thefts alone are up by 17 percent and crime is up by 25 percent in the district in the past year, according to data from the Metropolitan Police Department. 
Students enter the stores and steal right in front of the workers, according to a pod worker that wishes to remain anonymous. For ATV News, I'm Francine Warsoff. Another concern for AU students is the current opioid epidemic in the Washington, D.C. area. After nearly 400 deadly overdoses in 2022 alone, American University wants to arm students with the proper skills to combat this crisis. The Center for Wellbeing is partnering with the D.C. Board of Health to host Narcan trainings for students. Trainer Abigail Golden Morris says she wants as many students as possible to get Narcan training. Like it's really important that we all individually are kind of know what Narcan is, have it on us, but it is also at the end of the day, like it is a policy failure, right? So it is, it's kind of twofold because like Narcan trainings are not the solution to everything, right? Like we cannot Narcan train our way out of train our way out of the drug war, but it's like a small thing that everyone can kind of do is like know how to use Narcan, carry it on them, make sure your friends have it and your friends know how to use it. If you or someone you know is struggling with addiction, please contact the National Addiction Hotline at 1-800-662-4357. Abroad applications for the fall 2023 close at the end of the month, and students are looking forward to be going all over the globe. ATV's Julianne Sheehan spoke with students eager to travel. As March winds down, the application process for students studying abroad in the fall 2023 semester has come to a close. For some, this marks an exciting new chapter, but for other students like sophomore Abby Boyce, the end of the application season comes as a sigh of relief. I didn't start it until this month, and with midterms and everything, it all just gets too much to juggle. AU students wishing to study abroad must start by meeting with advisors from both the study abroad office and their respective majors and minors. Kendall Thompson says that her advisor helped her to stay on task and plan her going abroad in depth. All the study abroad advisors were very willing to talk to me about all the different programs and walk me through all the steps in great detail so I didn't really ever feel like I was alone in the process. Now that the application portion of the abroad experience has come to an end, these AU Eagles begin to prepare to fly to new destinations. The family cooks for you for breakfast, lunch, and dinner, and they do your laundry. So I get to eat the Spanish cuisine that I don't really know very well here. Before they fly too far, students wish to share words of wisdom to their peers hoping to study abroad in the future. Kendall Thompson and Grace Flores share their pieces of advice. I would definitely use the advisors because they help you so much. They're not like just advocating for one program. I definitely wish I would have worked on it um, earlier than I started working on it. I think I underestimated the amount of like things I would have to write and transcripts I would have to pull from. More information on abroad programs can be found on the AU Abroad portal. For ATV News, I'm Julianne Sheehan. Students won't have to travel abroad to enjoy beautiful sights as it is finally cherry blossom season in the district. With peak bloom falling on the weekend, locals and tourists alike will be rushing to see these stunning pink trees. This tradition wouldn't be complete without the annual Cherry Blossom Festival. Events are happening all over D.C. from now until April 16th. For more information, visit the National Cherry Blossom Festival.org. That's all for our show today. I'm Ginger Callwood. And I'm Jane Caroline Fusco with ATV News. We'll see you in April for our final broadcast of the semester.